Sorry, thank you so much for keeping it K24 this morning. Welcome to our social hour. My name is Shiko Kaitani. Keep talking to us through our social media platforms at K24 TV. Remember our WhatsApp number, pretty active, uh, should you wish to contribute to our ongoing discussion. And I'm telling you, we've got an interesting one for you. Now, one of the top five lessons, if you will, that the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us is that life really is too short and totally unpredictable. In a year, COVID has thrown away every sense of normalcy and ushered in new realities. New realities like how well are we prepared to leave this world? Something about our current state hits home and has many of us thinking, if I were to die today, what would happen to my loved ones? Well, if you haven't thought about it, my guests today are here to say you should. Joining me today, and I want to welcome to the show, is uh, Mr. Njeru Mwandiki. He is the Head of Business Development from Clarkson Insurance Brokers. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. You and, okay, and then we've also got Josh Karuga, who is the Operations Manager at Montezuma Mona Lisa Funeral Home. Welcome. Thanks a lot. Okay, and um, as we get started, uh, we want to throw the question of the day to you. And uh, let's start by apologizing that we're talking about death this morning. But if you can bear with us, we promise that we we do have some great information to give you today. So here's a question. Would you be open <clears throat> to the idea of planning your funeral? And if no, why not? Would you be open to the idea of planning your funeral? And if no, why not? Okay. At K24 TV is how you can reach us. Uh, now, Jero and Josh, I have to admit something. That when I thought I was going to meet someone from Montezuma, Mona Lisa, I'd be meeting someone who's quite dull. A sad, gloomy, quite the opposite, Josh. <laughs> what a pleasure meeting you. Happy to be here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us the truth. Do you tell people, um, you know, where you work often? Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> always an interesting conversation. All right. And uh, people are always very curious uh -huh. about what goes on. Yeah. Um, and the horror stories that mm -hmm. they have. But... Um, it's a workplace just like any other. Right. And uh, always willing and ready to serve people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. All right. So, gentlemen, let me start off with um, a very interesting report that was done by our very own People Daily that talks about how Kenya is one of the most expensive places to die. And I'll tell you, um, in this report, it talks about how Kenyans spend between anything, uh, between 50000 to 300000 in terms of organizing a funeral and as we get more and more into this um details from the report uh Jero, why don't we talk about the scope of funeral expenses in a modern society okay uh, thank you very much Rico. Uh, i'd say um, uh, going back mm -hmm. to tradition to the yeah. norm of uh, send-offs in kenya mm -hmm. you find that everything was society it yeah. was owned by society and um, in the 80s, earlier years, uh, they had the resources, yeah? So you'd say the community came together mm -hmm. and contributed, yeah? I would give a cow, yeah. someone else would give uh, a goat, mm -hmm. some would come with the plantains, mm -hmm. uh, and you find everybody was taken care of, mm -hmm. yeah? But with the change in social economics, yeah. uh, these have really uh, uh, thrown everything uh, off, off, off the table, mm -hmm. and now people have to come now with their pockets. Right. Uh, you have to dig uh, deep into your pockets mm -hmm. for the contribution. So the scope you find, um, we have quite a number of expenses yeah. which are uh, involved in uh, planning for a funeral. Mm -hmm. Now, um, okay. it's not like before when someone passes away is buried the next day. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's changes in socioeconomics, mm -hmm. uh, people uh, living uh, in far-flung areas. Mm -hmm. You have to keep their body for some time. Those yeah. are mortuary charges. And also, uh, most people are passing away in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. Those are hospital bills. Mm -hmm. So when, pass, uh, when someone passes away, there are so many um, uh, bills, uh, right. bills to take care of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so the scope is pretty wide. Mm -hmm. And depending on the, um, on the status of someone, mm. you might find someone is left with a bill of even more than a million shillings. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Wow. It's, uh, yeah it's really intriguing. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, that's why now we have to come up now and think of, you know, dynamic mm. ways to tackle these All uh, right. These um, Josh, when you think about it, because you're really in the heart of the business and you see the effects of not being organized when a loved one passes away, and it really does creep up on all of us, you know. Um, what do you think are some of the major reasons why people fail to plan for their demise, so to speak? Well, I think most people are um, caught up in life. Yeah. People are planning for their expenses such as they want to buy a new house, they want to buy a new car, 
but they don't factor in mm -hmm. that at some point in the journey of life, yeah. their demise will happen. Mm. Also, people don't like talking about death. Mm -hmm. It's a taboo. Yeah. And you see that these are the kind of things that is not a comfortable conversation to mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens when ultimately when someone passes on, right. they're caught unawares, mm -hmm. don't know where to start because mm -hmm. they didn't think through it yeah. before the event actually happened. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it, it could be quite an unfortunate uh, situation. Um, and, you know, we talk about culture and beliefs influencing our approach towards death. Um, like he said, it's really a taboo. So even for you who is in the insurance brokerage or, you know, pretty much that uh, line of business, how are you able to sell such a concept to people in Jeru because look we're talking about it as a taboo I mean when you walk up to someone and say oh hey by the way are you planning for your funeral <laughs> yes. um, I think uh, a very interesting perspective to mm. look at it uh, because it's a very serious issue that we have to surmount in the marketplace yeah, yeah. in society when mm. you're talking to people uh, we wouldn't call it uh, we are trying to sell a solution to the people mm -hmm. but we are trying to solve a problem in society right uh, uh, looking at uh, when uh, the first question <coughs> on the social economics yeah yeah so people kenyans are very dynamic mm -hmm. i would tell you that and when you look at the penetration of insurance in east africa mm -hmm. we are leading mm -hmm. yeah um at about two that uh, 2.37 percent the nearest rwanda is at about 1.8 percent mm -hmm. so kenyans and uh, economically kenyans are more uh, dynamic mm -hmm. in the region yeah mm -hmm. So the same, the same applies when it comes to changing dynamics. Right. Yeah? So it's all a matter of mm -hmm. sensitizing the people, mm -hmm. talking to the people, yeah. and you know, as we are very receptive to new ideas. Mm. Yeah? So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an uphill task, mm -hmm. but we have so many players in the, in the, indus in the industry yeah. and also so in society. Okay. We have our leaders. We can call upon everybody mm -hmm. and step up to the, uh, step up to the plate. Yeah? Yeah and assist us, you know, in uh, supporting our society in mm -hmm. these changing times and challenging times. Okay. Um, and even when we were coming up with the product, mm -hmm. that was before the COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah, when mm -hmm. we started engaging with uh, Montezuma mm -hmm. and uh, the risk carrier, the insurance company. Okay. That was before COVID-19, mm -hmm. because we saw there is a serious uh, need, need for this solution, yes. Right, we find okay. Uh, everybody is uh, setting up WhatsApp groups, mm -hmm. yeah, for, to raise funds, in the case of the Mice of Allah, yeah. loved one. So I think we should avoid this because everybody is burdened mm -hmm. financially. Mm -hmm. So we need to come up with a very practical solution. To okay. Yes. All right, let's uh, remind our viewers about our question of the day. Remember, we're asking you whether or not you would be open to the idea of planning your funeral. And if no, why? Is it an issue of this being taboo, simply put? Um, <clears throat> okay, we've got a text message that uh, our director wants us to, uh, to share, rather. And he says, I can't talk about my funeral right now. Reason being, I'm not ready. <laughs> death is inevitable i can't think about death let us just live knowing we will live one day okay for real life is short i don't have a problem with planning my funeral <laughs> it's popic from uh theresia uh, who says i can't plan for my death because life is important while living and not in death all right so you can start to see the perception around yes. uh what we're talking about funeral insurance but let's explain what it is very briefly in general if mm. you will uh, and then now we can of course get um uh, input from josh as well what exactly is funeral insurance how does it work and if you can what are the list of benefits if you can just summarize that for us okay um funeral insurance which we call last expense yeah? mm -hmm. um, is basically uh, a cover that you take and it's a contract which guarantees you in the case of your demise mm -hmm. that all the technical expenses of your send-off are taken care of right and within it is also a, 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 a cash benefit yeah? mm -hmm. that is going to support the family in the other uh, side arrangements right. for the, maybe the guests who are going to come mm -hmm. so basically what what the cover uh, the cover what it covers is uh, first of all the mortuary charges yeah they are covered and then we also in the, in the mortuary charges for up to 14 days mm -hmm. yeah uh, that's specifically for the Claxon last mile insurance mm -hmm. yeah and also what else is covered is that you're going to have depending on the cover 
mm -hmm. uh, advertisement in the newspapers, mm -hmm. uh, the flowers mm -hmm. uh, provided also, right. uh, the house, mm -hmm. countrywide, regardless of where in the country. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and then uh, we also have the, the, uh, the cash benefit. Yeah. Uh, we have a scope, uh, we, have, we have a platinum, we have gold, and we have a okay. silver. Mm -hmm. So like for silver, you get 50,000, mm -hmm. and the cash benefit, which goes, uh, and the, and the, and the cover, cover benefit of 150,000, which goes to the funeral home, mm -hmm. to the service provider, mm -hmm. we call them the service provider. Yeah. So now that takes care of all the technical expenses okay. as listed in the scope. Right. Yes. And beyond, I mean, obviously what Clarkson is offering, that mm. is pretty much the template for different funeral covers yes. uh, from different insurance companies, right? Uh, yes, it okay. is. Yeah. But mm. there's a difference in that. Depending mm. on, the, uh, on the companies, mm -hmm. the, the, cover, the cover differs. Okay. Some will give as low as 50,000. Oh, right. It goes directly to the family. Mm -hmm. The reason why we've come now on board with the service provider mm -hmm. is because you will get, like for instance, if I was to give, be given 50,000 mm -hmm. and I have other, some, some other uh, pressing economic issue, financial right. issues, oh, yeah, I might find like tempted <laughs> that I'm going to okay. you know, misappropriate the money. Right. But yes. uh, Josh, roping you in, I think even based on the messages that we're getting, it really hasn't hit home for so many why it's important for us to plan and talk about this openly. I think we need to discuss the true impact death has on those who are, you know, surviving the community at large. When you think about things psychologically, emotionally, uh, explain this for us so we can really understand why do I really need to start talking about this in planning? I think the impact that uh, someone's death mm. has on uh, the immediate family, yeah. the community, is usually uh, immense. Mm -hmm. And also, if you think about um, like a breadwinner, mm -hmm. if a breadwinner, if you lose a breadwinner, yeah. it really disorients how the family moves on from there. Mm -hmm. So now, when we think about funerals or when we think about your demise, mm -hmm. The idea of planning for it mm -hmm. is to leave things in good order. Yeah. That when you leave your family, when you leave your community, when you pass on, mm -hmm. that you've left them in a way that they'll sustain their life, yeah. that the impact of the funeral mm -hmm. won't be hard hitting mm -hmm. as it usually is. Because yeah. we've seen instances where someone has passed on, mm -hmm. they have a huge medical bill, mm -hmm. And then they have the funeral expenses to take care of. Right. Maybe you are the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. So you leave your family in a state of distress. Mm -hmm. And mind you, they're also grieving. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the emotions that they're going through. Mm -hmm. Right. And then here is, uh, you know, the financial implications of your right. death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it can be really overbearing. Mm -hmm. And that's why we say to protect your family. Mm -hmm and to show love to your family, right. you need to plan these things way in advance. Right. Uh, Njeru, someone's mm. watching this and wondering, why are you talking to me as a campus person or someone in my mid-30s mm. about funeral cover? Mm. They're probably thinking about this for their grandmother, grandfather, mm. and their parents. Yes. Uh, who exactly is this supposed to be for when you talk about funeral insurance? And not mm. specifically from Clarkson's perspective, yes. but ideally... Um, who would you be talking to and, and, and why should I take this up? I'm young, I'm vibrant, mm. I have a whole life ahead of me. Exactly. Um, the, the main, the main uh, target audience for this product yeah. is any family man, mm -hmm. yeah? any person, any young married person, you yeah. have a family. Um, I think that's the, pers the kind of person you're talking to. Mm -hmm. But no one specifically, so long as you're an adult mm -hmm. and uh, capable of making decisions on your own, right. is written off for this product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Because you'll find in the cover, you're covering you and your spouse mm -hmm. and up to a maximum of four children. Right. And your parents and your spouse's parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's an all-around solution. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, remember, we're asking you, would you be <coughs> open to the idea of planning your funeral? If not, why not? Um, uh, let me ask my director if we've got any text messages that we can share. Yes, no. All right. Someone says uh, from Nakuru, Jeremy, uh, that is, who says, hello, no, I just can't plan for my funeral. That's creating unnecessary thoughts into my short life. <laughs> Okay, personally, I don't understand why people put so much emphasis on the funeral, but not on the living. I tell my children to give me the cheapest they can, save the rest on other important things in life. I'm Paul in Moranga. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, I do understand we've got a caller. Should we take the call first? 
Okay, let's talk to Joshua from Kirenyaga. I, <laughs> he's quite the viewer, let me tell you. Joshua, good morning. Morning, Shiko. Sava, thank you so much for calling. <laughs> now, uh, say hi to the panelists. Okay, well, Mr. Limika. Now, uh, let me start briefly by answering the campus student who has just uh, uh, SMS to you. Mm -hmm. That uh, I tell her that the beauty of death is that it does not discriminate. Right. From a one day old kid to a 110 year old there. Right. Now, to this thing uh, about um, saving for funerals or whatever it is, mm -hmm. now, Shiko, I have a problem uh, investing in what I cannot see, yeah. in what I cannot ask questions about, right. and in what I cannot demand for services mm -hmm. and satisfaction. Right. Number two, I don't know, I don't see why I, I should invest in, uh, in my own funeral. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I'm gone, I would want my friends and my family to do something for me. I mean, it's the last favor, honestly. Right. Can't you just come and contribute a little bit there, give out your car? Why do I need to invest for my own funeral? <laughs> but finally, I think this whole funeral investment and whatever we call it, yeah. I find it to, to be uh, uh, really a waste of, uh, of money because when you're dead, you're dead. Let's do what the Muslims do. You die in the morning, they bury you in the evening, okay? <laughs> no need of buying expensive caskets, organizing for huge, long motorcades, and then leaving your, uh, your, your, your loved ones suffering and, and, and with huge, huge bills. Yes. Even Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. And because the dead don't bury their dead, let's not invest in the dead. That's my, my input. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Joshua. <laughs> All right. He does have a point, though, uh, that why go over and beyond uh, to plan my own funeral and I'm not expecting much from my own loved ones. Like, do what you can. But speaking of which, let me just read this for you, uh, gentlemen, and then now we can talk about something uh, Joshua alluded to. And this one is from Christian Science Monitor. Quite an interesting article that says, Kenyans burdened by the cost of honoring the dead. This is the story of one Agnes Adoyo who buried her own mother, Mama Leo Kadia, uh, in a place called Kibogoria. And um, from the writer's perspective, an entire village came to get a glimpse of Mama uh, in a mud hut. And of course, beyond that, you know, said their goodbyes. But listen to how Agnes puts it. She says that when her father died the year before, uh, her brother slaughtered a cow. But three weeks later, her own brother died too in a road accident. Now, people are saying, in the case of my mother... I should have slaughtered a cow. And the writer goes on to say, the law of people of Kenya holds spectacular funerals designed to honor the dead and appease the spirits. They believe each, uh, each person rather should be buried where they were born and families hire expensive cars and shovel hundreds of miles to bring the deceased back to their tribal home near the shores of of Lake Victoria's. Families who cannot afford to carry out a funeral straight away store the body in a mortuary, racking up fees until they raise the funds. And this is the part I like. But honoring the dead can bankrupt the living. Joshua, why do we also put the frustration on ourselves? Could it be that we are not able to afford this cost because we must have elaborate funerals? I think just also to respond to the caller, yeah. um, we have to appreciate the role that culture and uh, our beliefs play mm -hmm. in how we organize a funeral. Right. You know, uh, we hold our loved ones very dearly, mm -hmm. and there's a set, uh, there's a set standard yeah. from where we come from, back mm -hmm. in our villages, mm -hmm. where we expect how we're supposed to do the funeral. Right. So all this... Uh, keep pressure. Mm -hmm. We do have pressure. Mm -hmm. Just in like any event, right. whether it's a wedding, whether it's a birthday, mm -hmm. we do have pressure in um, impressing mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But I think um, the most important thing is to, and that's where the planning comes. Because right. when you plan for it, mm -hmm. you don't have any pressure to impress anyone else mm -hmm. or to burden yourself with excessive bills. Right. When you plan for it, you just go according to plan, mm -hmm. you know? And the good thing is that when you plan for it and you plan for the finances 
for it, right. it wouldn't burden you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and you know, the thing is, Joshua is wondering, Jeru, surely, mm -hmm. let's just do it, keep it simple as our Muslim brothers do, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. Uh, what is the point of this expensive casket? Why do I have to go to Montezuma when I could just actually get the, my, my loved one from City Mortuary? You see, all these are sort of considered as luxury uh, products, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah, exactly. But like Josh said, we have to appreciate that it is part of our culture. There's something yes. about doing mm -hmm. a proper send-off. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to you, Jeru, who exactly is eligible for a funeral cover? And one of the most important questions I had for you is who can or cannot get covered in such a scenario? If I have a terminal illness, do I qualify for this? Okay, um, I think um, the cover does not exempt anyone mm -hmm. uh, uh, from, you know, from benefiting from the insurance. All right. Uh, but is in, in, uh, as in no insurance uh, products, mm -hmm. there has to be always at most faithfulness. Yeah. In the, because they have, we have questionnaire forms mm -hmm. that when you're failing, you have to give all the information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now th that's up to the underwriter to yeah. decide whether he's going to give you the cover or not. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, mm -hmm. um, for, let's talk, for instance, for the product that we have, yeah. uh, there is a maximum joining age. Mm -hmm. So if you're past that particular age, mm -hmm. then you do not qualify to be covered. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. The, uh, of course, there's, uh, the, the fact being that the risk of a claim happening at any time mm -hmm. increases as you grow older. Right. So past the age of 80, mainly, mm -hmm. you are not covered. Some mm -hmm. covers will give a minimum, a maximum of 75. Right. Yeah. But for the, uh, for the last mile, mm -hmm. for the Klaxon last mile, we are given up to 80. Mm -hmm. And then from then, renewal is automatic mm -hmm. up to 90 years of age. Mm -hmm. Some will stop at 80 years of age. Right. Yeah. But right. at least for us, we've pushed it up to mm -hmm. 80 years of age. Okay. And then when it comes to those who are chronically ill yeah. uh, with terminal illnesses, mm -hmm. you need to give all the information mm -hmm. as per the underwriting terms. Right. So you have to be uh, sincerely uh, very truthful mm -hmm. with all the information. Mm -hmm. um, there is always a waiting period of three months. Right. Yes. Okay. So if, for instance, I was to decide now, I need to cover someone in my family mm -hmm. uh, because he or she is terminally ill and is mm -hmm. going to pass uh, after maybe a month or so. Yeah. That one, of course, there is that waiting period. Yeah. It's not going to apply. Okay. And even to yourself, mm -hmm. it's not just to the to the family member. Okay. Yes. Uh, let me stop you there. I do understand we've got Jonathan from Mombasa calling in. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Shiko. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, do you have a question or a comment? And let me ask my director to turn up the monitor as well. Okay. Go ahead. Just a comment on the ongoing issue. Yeah. I think, uh, actually, what I would say is that uh, this uh, issue of uh, you know, insurance, I don't see it. I don't see it. To me, I don't see it to be so fine. Because mm -hmm. in a way, you find that uh, most of the families cannot afford very expensive uh, funeral expenses. Mm -hmm. And you find that, uh, like uh, in Western Kenya, you find that this funeral issue has become so such a big burden to the families in that you find that uh, uh, when one dies, or yeah. like a father or a mother dies, the children who are left behind, yeah. they are left without nothing. Mm -hmm due to the funeral expenses. Mm -hmm. The cost is too expensive. Mm -hmm. And I would say more so, I would, I would prefer if the, <laughs> sorry to say so, but I would prefer even if the corona issue would go on so that uh, the expenses could come down. What? So that at least, <laughs> so that at least the, the expenses could go down. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, of course, the number of people attending the funerals, yeah. They are so big in that you have to cut up for the mm -hmm. expenses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But with the, like the corona rule that's still on, yeah. with the 100 people or less than 100 people, it could be much better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. You. Thank you so much for that, uh, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, listen to what he says. Uh, people obviously have resulted mm -hmm. to crowdfunding. Yes. And I think we talked even about this uh, prior to the show. Uh, the idea that you have to keep adding people to our WhatsApp group. Uh, let's put money together for mama or dad who's going to be with the Lord XYZ is really the whole reason why the two of you are here. Yes. So that that can come to an end. Mm. 
correct? Yes. Absolutely. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, the value of uh, funeral insurance, yeah. if you think about how we organize our finances, mm -hmm. we've organized every shill, every, you know, everything to the shilling. Yeah. We know how much we're going to pay for rent. Mm -hmm. We know how much we're going to mm -hmm. do our groceries. Mm -hmm. We know how much is for fuel. Mm -hmm. And then when you get an expected ad into a WhatsApp group, mm -hmm. and you're expected to contribute, yeah. and it's not just one, it's mm -hmm. maybe several in a month, mm. yeah. it also gives us, uh, it makes us uncomfortable, yeah. because now here are our friends mm -hmm. asking us for money to contribute to a funeral, mm -hmm. which we may want to contribute, right. but we are limited in our finances, mm. you know? Mm. So, to some extent, I agree with Jonathan. Yeah. During the COVID period, because if you think about the elements of a funeral, yeah. you have the hearse, mm -hmm. you have the casket, mm -hmm. and you have the preservation. Mm -hmm. And then you have the funeral ceremony. Yeah. So what it would cost to cater for 50 people mm -hmm. is not the same amount of money that yeah. it would cost to cater for 300 wow. or 400. Absolutely. So definitely the costs do come down. Yeah, and he <laughs> said he wants corona to continue, <laughs> to continue. <laughs> so, so that we can drop expenses. Well, no one wants corona <laughs> to continue, <laughs> but... It does change how we think right. about funerals. Absolutely. You know? mm. And COVID has changed how we do a lot of things. Absolutely. Yes. Even funerals. All right. And maybe to add something to that, yeah? mm -hmm. uh, Jonathan had a very, uh, uh, a very good point. Mm -hmm. um, but also you find the cost of taking a uh, last expense cover. Yeah. It's not as high as people think. Mm. Uh, as I said before, we need to do a lot of uh, civic education, a lot of reaching out to the, uh, to the society. Mm -hmm. Because you find for as little as a thousand shillings, a thousand one hundred per year, mm -hmm. you get a comprehensive cover. Mm -hmm. That's for a group cover. And for as little as three thousand nine hundred uh, and fifty shillings per year, mm -hmm. you get a comprehensive family cover. Wow. So it's very cheap, mm -hmm. very affordable, mm -hmm. and the benefits are astounding. All right. Yes. So you've had it. Uh, we are going to be taking a short commercial break. So far, so good. Thank you so much for the feedback that we are receiving. Keep talking to us. Remember, the question of the day is, would you be open to the idea of planning your very own funeral? Hmm. And if not, why not? <laughs> Well, uh, at K24 TV is how you can reach us. We'll be back with more with Njeru and, of course, Josh in just a moment. Stick with K24 this morning.